before Matt's diabetes, Matthew was a lovely lad, very outgoing, friendly, joking, did anything you wanted to, just a good old round laugh. But now he's completely changed. He's more withdrawn. Um, he doesn't like mixing with a lot of people anymore. He's gone quite shy as well. Yes, causes quite a few arguments, which he never did before. But when he takes his medication, it's perfect. He was the boy that was once the boy. So diabetes is a autoimmune disease um, which basically stops the beta cells in your pancreas from producing insulin. It affects our relationship in the small but, uh, a few but small ways, in the sense of it's hard to keep track of how Matt is going to be on a particular day. Sometimes I'll message him and I won't get a reply until maybe a day later, at, at most two days later. Um, it's not often, but sometimes that happens and that's usually because he's um, stressed about a particular subject or his diabetes is, you know, acting up and sometimes, usually, it is a mixture of the two. Um, but there's no negative impact on us really. We're still best friends, I've been for two years and he knows that I'll try and support him however I can. Uh, to the best of my ability because I'll be honest I'm not great at it but I will be there for him if needs be. Having a diabetic son is very hard, very hard indeed. You've, you've got to watch him practically 90% of the time just to make sure that they're um, taking their medication, doing their diet properly but sometimes that doesn't always happen. So you're constantly on their back which you don't want to be but you have to be, as that person will spiral quickly downhill and then you end up in hospital. So it is very, very hard. With Matt, he values his time and his education greatly. Um, he is a kind of person that feels the need to uh, actually get involved and do things. He's very hands-on. Um, so he doesn't really want like his education or degree handed to him on a plate. He wants to actively be there and be practical, and get involved and actually earn it. He's, he's not someone that is just wanting to wait around for things to happen. He makes things happen, but sometimes his diabetes will get in the way of that. And for him, that will really suck because he will probably feel like he'll lose a sense of purpose. Uh, since being diagnosed with diabetes, my life has uh, changed dramatically. Uh, I used to be a very sporty, very outgoing person, um, but because of my diagnosis, uh, I've had to leave like hockey, rugby, because I'm just not physically fit enough to be able to do those sports anymore. Um, and also, I'm, I'm someone who doesn't like a routine. Uh, I like to be spontaneous and just, just get on with life. Um, but because I'm diabetic, I have to have a routine, um, and as do um, most things around me, really. Um, which is, isn't something I really enjoy. Matthew's very hard to keep on track. When he's taking his medication, he's fine, but when he doesn't, you know he's not taking it, and at the moment, he's not. So it's very hard, so I have to keep nagging in and make sure, because every night I go to bed thinking, am I going to wake up to the sun in the morning? Every day I think about that. Is he taking his injections? Is he not taking his injections? Especially his long acting one at night, which keeps him alive, basically. So as a diabetic, my daily routine requires four daily injections um, as a minimum. So that's to cover breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a nighttime injection, which lasts a little bit longer. Um, so you, you get Fiasp or like whatever your brand of uh, quick acting insulin is, which is much faster and basically acts within two hours. And you get your uh, long acting, which I use to JO, which takes like 40 hours and slowly comes out over that period. Um, so that would usually be taken at the night time. Um, but while 
you have to do the injections, you also have to test your bloods. Uh, depending on how lucky you are, you have uh, a choice between using a finger prick or a Libre, which is a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor that goes in your arm. And you can just use a phone or some kind of meter to scan that. And you, you have to scan at least eight times a day. Um, but usually diabetics end up doing 20, 30 times a day to um, make sure they, they stay in check. Um, and it also requires action every time you scan. So if your bloods are high, it requires some exercise, water or insulin. And if your bloods are low, it requires uh, an intake of sugar um, to, in order to avoid a hypo, which is basically when your blood sugars drop below four uh, and it basically causes confusion, dizziness and uh, it can be quite serious and lead into a coma, but that's why we tend to carry things like dextrose tablets. He, he loses weight drastically. You know, he can't walk upstairs. He's, he's lost his breath. You know, he's, he just, you think he's going to be in hospital every day when he does that. And it's not nice to see. Diabetes can have a huge impact on mental health. Um, having to micromanage everything you eat, drink, and having to take the injections every day uh, without a break, uh, it, it can get quite exhausting and it's, it's quite common for people with diabetes to uh, get burnt out. Uh, I, know, I know for myself, uh, I've gone through quite a few uh, periods where I've, I've burnt out. Um, you just get to the point where there's like a mental block um, you don't want to do it anymore, it's like, what's the point, why me, you know, all those kind of like stereotypical illness things. Diabetes is horrible, nasty disease. I would never wish anybody to have that. It takes your eyes, it takes your organs, it takes your feet, you know. It takes a person's character away from them and it upsets a lot of family around them. And it's very, very hard and all you worry about are they going to die? Are they going to lose their sight? Are they going to lose their feet? Matthew's still young enough to be able to cope to stop that from happening, but he has to carry on with his insulin and his medications. The last thing I want is my son to go blind. You know, it's not nice, not nice at all. Wouldn't wish it on anybody. It's hard for me as well, because I'm the one that's there, is always picking up the pieces for him. It's very hard. So, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> but, what can I say? Just, I can't say anymore, Matt. <laughs> <laughs>